it's hard to understand these issues and filter them through our, our civilization, our, our times, because if you were in Cape Verde at the time, you had a ship that went back and forth to the African coast, and maybe you carried tin, maybe you carried cloth, and you also carry those 10 people. Mm -hmm. So we, we tend to think of slave ships, people bound and shackled. It's like it was, it was commerce. Yeah. It was commerce so that if somebody saw a ship, they weren't thinking of it as a slave ship necessarily. It is a ship going to Africa right. or going to America. So it's, it's a whole different mindset. We've talked a lot up to this point about how these people are so like us, uh, that they have experiences that we can really relate to. This is where people are different, and you've got to get a sense of, uh, at the time, of the brutality that was in their everyday lives. This is coming out of the revolution. Coral Hatch was the same age as um, Captain John Kendrick. He was born in 1740 in Marshfield, Massachusetts, on the South Shore. He was a blackbirder. He, was, he made his money during the Revolution, slave trading and privateering. The whole culture of Yankee New Englanders, you gotta go back to the Mayflower. You got the bunch of city dwellers who are on board this tiny little boat. They arrive in the winter from New England and uh, Half of their population dies, just a, really just a few dozen of them. And they have to make their living every year out of this area which has no resources really. Every year you're having children who are dying in infancy and so you have more and more kids. We found a Kroll Hatch who was a child buried in the Marshfield Cemetery. You know, it's really common at the time that uh, as you were having all your kids, that uh, if one died, you know, at age one or two or three, um, the next one would be named the same. They were not sentimentalists. You have a very, very hard people after a few generations who uh, can't rely upon the earth to uh, sustain them. They have to rely upon hard work. The culture is rugged individualism, and that's where it really came from. They don't look to the government for help. They are counting on themselves, and they count, and they believe really in one thing, which is money. You take that sense and you put it up against what's going on with the revolution. Marshfield was a Tory town. It was a wealthy town. It was a cattle town, and it was uh, run at the time by loyalists. But Crow Hatch clearly was making his money privateering. He was on the other side. His brother, Noah Hatch, was a Tory and uh, sided with the British. In 1774, an auctioneer came to sell some cattle in Marshfield. The locals got word that the cattle belonged to loyalists. They took the auctioneer stripped him, tarred and feathered him, killed one of the cattle, hollowed it out, stuffed him inside, put the carcass on a two-wheeled ox cart, wheeled it around where they would occasionally drag the man out of the carcass to beat him, and then stuff him back inside again. Eventually they made their way to the Duxbury Line, where another mob came and continued on their way until finally the man was left near dead at the doorstep of a Tory house. That's what was going on with the Patriot Movement. That's how angry people were with the British at the time. So I'm not going to give you a lot of information about Coral Hatch. I don't, I don't think facts and figures are really going to do justice to this man. Some of these people involved in the Columbia Expedition were not heroes, as we would see them today. There are people who dealt in death and bondage because they made money at it, and they didn't care. 
So after the revolution, after Massachusetts and Rhode Island were banning the slave trade, prominent residents continued to make their money in the slave trade by simply going to Africa or Cape Verde and bringing them to South Carolina and then bringing what they had in South Carolina up to Massachusetts. These were people who were used to taking risks and having well-armed crews. So going off to the Northwest Coast probably seemed worth the risk. They were looking to diversify. But they were looking at a bottom line and they wanted a good return on their investment. Slavery provided a great return on an investment. This looked like it could provide even better. You have to think about what kind of person it is who really doesn't care about his brother being imprisoned, he really doesn't care about, about flouting government regulations, he really doesn't care about smuggling, he really doesn't care about people being sold into bondage or where they came from or where they're going. All he's concerned about is making a profit. And that is brutality. But when you talk about what happened to that auctioneer, if I didn't tell you what the year was, and I didn't tell you what, where it was, you'd say, God, you know, what sort of people are these? What sort of people take a man who's just trying to sell something legally and just brutalize him, torture him? And you'd say, what part of Afghanistan, what part of Somalia is that? That was at the birth of our nation. Um, and those were patriots who did that. I mean, they were angry. Uh, they didn't like what the British were doing, coming in and telling them what to do. Telling them how they could make their money, how they could live their lives, uh, what taxes they had to pay. The way that people looked at other people at the time was different. It was changing but it was different. Brutality, that's what Kroll Hatch grew up with. That's what he dealt in. Callous indifference in the name of profit. That's one of our backers. That's one of our owners of the Columbia Expedition. And he's not the only one. I've got a story of a man who was also a business partner of Kroll Hatch's. He came in towards the end as they were forming the syndicate. Samuel Brown, Newport, Rhode Island. 